Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're going to be putting some concepts of armor myths to the test. Now, there's a lot of myths around armor in Space Engineers floating around, so I thought we'd test some of them out and bust them. Also, towards the end, I'm going to show you a new form of armor that I've been working on thanks to a very interesting message. Now, what we've got here is we've got varying slopes of armor, and in a real world scenario, the slope of the armor will affect the penetration. Say for instance, we have one block of armor thickness here. Here, the slope will actually create it to have to penetrate two blocks of armor. But will that actually be taken into consideration in Space Engineers? And it's a myth that's going around about people talking about slope in their armor, so we're gonna try it today. Now, we've got a flat piece that's absolutely vertical, and the results that I'm giving you for this, I have tested multiple times before. So we're gonna wind up with the first rocket and fire away. Now, I did this against light armor, and light armor basically just doesn't show much result. So we've not got a penetration, but we've still got a dint. Now, we move on here. No penetration, we've still got a dent, right? So we're not getting any penetration. The rocket's not bouncing off, though. I'm not seeing it bounce off at all. And there we go. Now I'm just going to just a little bit down. And there we go, we've got some, we've got holes already. Now if we move on, we've got the next target that's just slightly sloped. And this is the one that I've having, been having the best work with, or sort of look you could say about bouncing rounds actually off it. You can actually see how the missile is actually being deflected and it's causing slightly less damage than the previous absolute flat target so if we fire again you can just see how the actual missile is slightly deflecting it's quite a strange but it seems to be more realistic now this is where things get a little bit weird now we're moving on to the third target now technically we should have even a better bounce but the result is rather strange it seems like 50 percent of the time it does work better and then some of the time it just seems to be completely random on this sort of target the only one of our consistency is with the second target at that sort of angle now as you can see there two of the shots we actually fired so with this one here and this one on the right did on really little damage but this one in the middle did just the same damage as it did on the beginning targets and there wasn't too much deflection on the actual missile if you look closely now this one should have the best deflection but let's tr try it out so we're gonna fire one rocket and as you can see, this this should have the ultimate deflection. This is, means it has to penetrate probably about two and a half blocks worth of armor. But as you can see, it's actually just punishing holes and the armor itself is not affecting it at all. So we'll just have a quick analysis of the damage. So the final target here, it, it didn't work. This should have had the best effect. But then the other two middle targets at this slightly different angle seem to prevent the damage a lot better or barely cause any at all i was really surprised to see this result because i personally thought that deflecting the armor would have no effect at all but it seems to compared to the actual flat and the horizontal and what i came to is the second target seems to be the best for deflecting because it has a constant sort of variable where the third target and the last target are completely useless and the first one is just random it seems to either penetrate or it doesn't where having it at this sort of small slope gives it much better chance of bouncing off so we'll move on now to the new armor that i've been actually working on so i received the message we'll, we'll just fly henry over there sadly henry's not doing too well in the recent survival episodes and it said what would happen if you place welders behind a block and use that as some form of armor. Now, I, I went into quite a thorough testing, and I'll show you how I've, I've set this up. So we've actually got the actual center ship there, and we've got a secondary ship on the side acting as the armor. Now, originally, I tried doing it a different way. I'll just quickly demonstrate what I tried to do. Is I actually got the ship like so, and I built up a wall, and then I added the welders to the side. Now, I thought this was gonna work really well. As you can see, we've got the welders on the side. All looks fine and dandy. And then all we need to do is slip in the armor in front. Now, that would be good if it worked that way. But these welders don't actually affect the actual block is attached to. So if we grab our grinder, you can basically just see how they're not actually going to affect this. So that's grinded down. We're going to need some power. 
whack some power on and we'll turn all the grinders on just so you can witness this yourself now all the welders and we turn them to on so that welder's not actually affecting that so we ran into the first sort of major dilemma now I moved on to this second concept so the idea is a separate ship so it will be affected now this works really well so I'm just gonna demo this by um, putting some light blocks in here and we'll give it some small arms fire so as you can see here we've done a dint this block and it instantly repairs so I'm just gonna do a side angle so you can actually check that out so it's instantly repairing it's 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 crazy this this basically makes your ship indestructible and makes it so you don't have to do 50 layers of heavy armor you do have to invest though in the welders that can be quite costly uh, but in survival if you're gonna make a big ship you're gonna want to make it worthwhile as you can see as soon as it gets damaged it's, it's repaired instantly but if we do this for instance we put uh, two light armors there and then we actually shoot out you can just see the damage it actually does to the block so you can see it's already started to dint it so yeah you can see the dint there where if you shoot at this it's just instant repair so let's install ourselves the heavy armor back into place make sure we've got some heavy armor there we go there we go and now we're going to demonstrate this with rockets now if we paired up the two ideas from over there with the slight angle of the armor we can possibly make this absolutely indestructible so i'm going to give it just a slight angle when i'm firing at it and what you can actually see is that bounce now that bounce is extremely important because what we're going to get is the actual armor to be welded up from the inside so as you can see it's welding up quite instantly now we've got that hole that square and that sometimes happens but just just look how easy this is imagine you doing some in combat repairs you come along you install another piece of armor and it instantly weld it up you can just see as we grind that away it's going to instantly weld up whatever you install. So you could just have a, maybe just one guy who goes around quickly installing pieces of armor in the battle. And you'd be almost indestructible. Now let's fire a second one. Now I'm, it's, I probably should have built this a little bit bigger to demonstrate it. But we'll fire one here. See what happens. So we can the actual welders are welding up and doing the best they can. Now we're going to try firing one more central. So we can actually get it to sort itself out. So that's the result that we should have had. These ones were more because I actually targeted the outside where there's no grinders, than, well, there were no welders. So if we target another spot like this, we can pretty much have an indestructible wall. I can keep firing at this all day with the rockets and it's just gonna keep repairing it. As long as I've got the parts inside there, it should be quite repaired. Unless something like this happens and then all you have to do is install another block quite cheap quite easy quite effective and it just means that your ship can last a lot longer i believe so we're over here near the red ship now what i've done is quickly retrofitted it with a bit of adaptive armor just to see what sort of effect we'd have on a larger ship now with fingers crossed it should all go well i've blended it in the design as well because i want my armor to be a little bit secret you don't want the enemy to know where your actual best thickest armor is because you want them to hit that to protect your crew rather than going for the weaker spots like a giant hole maybe in the side like the death star for instance now we're going to fire one or two rounds at it and we'll see what sort of results we get now if everything's going well it should be repairing and it doesn't look like we've got any damage on it so far so it's doing quite well yeah so it's instantly repairing back up now it might sound a little bit overpowered this definitely a bit overpowered because it means that your ship can pretty much never be destroyed by however many missiles they fire at it because it can just simply be repaired unless something like this is happening what is happening we've got sparks we'll fire another rocket oh it's just repairing sparks so so there's some big repairing going on i think behind there maybe we caused a lot of damage with that previous rocket and whack one there so it can definitely take a lot more damage prepared to the standard sort of armor. And all you'd have to do is simply run along and patch up these holes that we've created. So thanks for watching guys and hopefully that gives you some interesting ideas for armor. So I'll see you next time.